on Zoom. And again, our service begins on page two of your bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Happy Mother's Day. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Good morning. Psalm 98 can be found on in the Book of Common Prayer on page 727 or in the bulletin on page 3. We'll read this responsibly. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm. Has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise in all that is in it. The lands and those who dwell therein. Let the let the rivers clap their hands. And let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world. 
and the peoples with equity. The second reading is 1 John 5, verses 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. According to John. heard from my father you did not choose me but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask in my name I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another the gospel of the Lord From our gospel this morning, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I love our uh, readings today and especially this continuation of, our, of the gospel of John. We hear these themes of love, abide in my love. We hear this theme of friendship, that Jesus no longer calls us servants, but calls us friends. Now we hear this reading, or this uh, reading in the um, line of uh, God, the Gospel of John, is right before Jesus' death. It's his farewell discourse. So he's sharing with his disciples this deepness of love, and also this completeness of joy just before he dies. And as you look at different commentaries, it's great because, you know, there's so much written on friendship and what it means to be friends with Christ, that Christ calls us friends, not just servants. And there's obviously a lot about abiding, remaining in God's love. But that phrase I started a sermon out with, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. I'm amazed at how much, how little is written about that one verse. It's just kind of like we, we gloss over it, doesn't it? But what we hear in this gospel 
is that Jesus' joy is in us, and his hope for us is that our joy can be complete. What, what would complete joy look like for you? What does it mean to, be, to have that joy that is complete through Christ? I ask you again, and I'm going to give you a little time to think about it. What would complete joy look like in your life? Complete joy. What would it look like to be filled with joy? Maybe it's the young voices of children crying out. That joy of a child. Remember those days when everything you saw was new and everything you saw just gave you complete joy? Maybe it's the joy of reuniting with friends after a long, long time of being separated. Maybe it's that joy of a parent or even an aunt as they see a newborn child. The joy of motherhood. The joy of having a mother. Or maybe it has nothing to do with that at all. Maybe that complete joy is a complete understanding and giving ourselves to Christ. I'm um, in a clergy wellness group and it's with the Society of St. John the Evangelist. Brother Luke is our guide in this group. And he keeps talking about that joy. He keeps talking about playfulness. What does it mean to play like a child again? And every time he says that, there's a picture I have on my iPhone, and it's this little girl in a pink helmet, and she's on her bike, and she's got the biggest grin. And whenever I go mountain biking, I think of that picture. I'm like, okay, that's the joy I want to have in this ride. I just want to get out and forget everything. What does complete joy look like for you? I mean, how many people might have moved here to enjoy Colorado, to be out in God's creation and have complete joy in God's nature and the mountains. And then we get so wrapped up in our jobs and our daily lives that we never even get out to the mountains. How many people here, if you think of your spiritual life, think of joy? Or is it more of thinking of dedication of prostrating yourself in front of the altar at the foot of the cross, as some uh, people say, of confession. But does joy come into your spiritual, in, into your thinking when you think of your spiritual life? I hope so. And if not, maybe we need to read the gospel again, because it's all about God's love, but also God's joy in us, complete joy. So what would it take for you to have complete joy in your life? What are the things that block us from really being joyful? And you might say, well, Brian, it's been a hard life. I've lost some loved ones. Some of the loved ones I know are are sick. People are getting older around me. Well, remember this passage, this call, this statement by Jesus that his joy is in us and that our joy should be complete is right before his death. And yes, the ultimate joy for Christians is to know that God loved us so much that he would die on that cross for us. But it's even in our pain that we are called to experience joy to experience that love that Christ has given to us. So again, what would it take for you to have complete joy? Joseph Stewart uh, St- Sicking, he's an author of a book called uh, um, The Spirituality of Friendship. He talks about this joy. 
He call, says, Joy, joyful people are not those who have the most fun. They are the ones who through emptying themselves brings life to others. He sees joy not as a pill that we take, but as a fruit, a fruit that has to grow. And it is one of the fruits of the spirits, according to Galatians, right? Joy is in there as a fruit of the Spirit. So how are we going to cultivate joy within ourselves? It's not a pill that we take. It is a fruit that we cultivate within us. A fruit of the Spirit given to us so that our joy might be in Christ. And Christ's joy in us might be complete. So today, may we be filled with joy. And yes, we come here, we have our masks on, but you can see joy in people's faces, can't you? You can see the little squint in their eyes when they're smiling. If you need a little joy after the service, look back at the little ones back here. I'm looking right back at the weights and I could just see, <laughs> see that little one. That'll give you joy. But our call is to have that joy complete in us. So may we cultivate that joy as a spiritual discipline, as a fruit of the Spirit. What will it take for you to be filled with joy? In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join me in reading the Nicene Creed, which may be found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin on page 5. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of the heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning. Prayers of the people are form three. It can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387 or in your bulletin on page six. We'll read responsibly. You may sit, stand, kneel, or as you are comfortable. Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. We 
we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. Today we lift up all those we know and love, but see no longer. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Steve Lewis, Jan P., Arlene, Megan and the Koltiska family, Jen and family, Baby Violet, Michael C., Michael L., Irene, Christy, Leslie, Lawrence M., Dave and Judy, Josh S., Mary P., David C., Debbie and Dave and family, our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners and those in nursing facilities. Today we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus, those who have died, those who are sick, those in quarantine and their families. We pray for continued moisture during this time of drought in Colorado and the West. And today we especially pray for our country we pray for justice, we pray for peace, we pray for understanding, and we pray for an end of the racism, hatred, and political division that continues to infect and divide this country. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week. Cindy Fastert, Kendra Mulligan, Kenzie Rogers, Dennis Smith, Carol Sterling, Melissa Ball, Amelia Kelly, Rick Plotke, and David Thornton. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks to God for the divine gift of motherhood in all its diverse forms. Let us pray for all the mothers among us today, for our own mothers, those living and those who have passed away, for the mothers who loved us and for those who fell short of loving us fully, for all who hope to be mothers and someday for those whose hope to have children has been frustrated, for all mothers who have lost children, for all women and men who have mothered others in any way, those who have been our substitute mothers, and we who have done so for those in need, and for the earth that bore us and provides us with our sustenance. We pray this all in the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Today's altar flowers have been given by Maria Denton in celebration of Kenzie Rogers' 18th birthday and in memory of her mother, Estelle Musso, and also in celebration of all mothers on this Mother's Day. <clears throat> Holy and gracious God, we do lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, knowing that you are constantly doing more than we could ever ask or imagine. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone. I invite you to share God's peace with your households in here and then also online with your, all your households. God's peace, everyone. Hmm. All right. Please be seated. Well, before I forget them again, because last week I forgot them at both services, uh, we forgot our birthday and anniversary prayers last week. So uh, today we'll uh, lift up all those who have birthdays uh, this uh, month. Um, anyone with a May birthday here in in the sanctuary? Got at least one, all right, uh, two, all right, three, four, okay, we got a bunch. And for all those on Zoom, let us pray for all those uh, celebrating their birthdays in March, uh, in March, in May, that too. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, everybody. All right, and how about anniversaries? Any May anniversaries? Don't see. Ah, all right, yeah, we got the Bryants. All right, well, let us pray for all those celebrating their anniversaries this month. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy anniversary, everybody. All right. And just a few uh, quick announcements. Um, first of all, thank you, everyone, for uh, your patience in all of this as we uh, do this hybrid thing of, uh, of uh, services. Uh, the voices from God from in here, uh, from the second reading and also in our um, Nicene Creed. And for those on Zoom, obviously, I have my mic pack off at the very beginning of the gospel. All those things are just part of uh, trying to figure out how to do all this in person and all. So I uh, appreciate your patience. A um, few things coming up uh, with Mother's Day. First of all, happy Mother's Day, everyone. All the moms here with us and on Zoom. Um, with Mother's Day, we, don't, uh, we will not have youth group today, and we won't have Christian education between the services for the kids as well. Uh, we invite everyone to spend time with their moms and, and all. So... Um, also coming up uh, as we do this hybrid thing, uh, we are looking for greeters to uh, welcome people in to the sanctuary. So if you're interested in that, please see myself or B Bill Lee. And then also the sound and video uh, team, uh, we're looking for volunteers there. So if you, any of those interest you, uh, please let us know, that's for sure. Today we have communion, obviously. Um, in fact, uh, for those who, um, we've been on that um, every other week with com communion. Now that we're inside, we're gonna have communion every single week. So those on Zoom, if you'd like to swing by after the service on 4th Street, we'll have uh, the drive, uh, uh, drive up communion as well. So come and join us for that. I've had a few people asking about Arlene. Uh, Arlene Armada, she um, had her brain surgery, what now, three or four weeks ago. Many are getting the email from her daughter, Donna, but others aren't. So. She's uh, doing well, she's recovering. She goes into rehab, or she went into rehab yesterday or Friday. 
So uh, she's now at a rehab center in Greenwood Village. If you'd like that address or like to visit her or so, you can get in touch with the office and we can get you that address and everything. But please do continue to keep um, her in your prayers. And also great news, uh, June 1st, uh, so coming up in just a few weeks, uh, Kimberly Hubs will be joining our staff. She will be our new Christian Formation Director. She comes uh, to us from over in Parker. She goes to St. Matthew's and was a youth group leader there, but now is expanding her ministry for all children, um, uh, youth, and uh, young families with us. So we'll uh, have a great welcome for her when she uh, in, in June, and she'll come here with her husband, Clay, and she has three daughters who are all college age and all that, so they'll be joining us from time to time. So great news that we're able to um, call our, our uh, Christian Formation Director. So thank you for everyone that made that possible. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Please stand as you are able. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy known have we given thee. Before we start our uh, communion prayer, for those inside, uh, if you haven't been, or if you weren't here last week, as we have uh, communion, uh, uh, the ushers will uh, bring you or um, uh, direct you to come forward. You'll, um, I'll give you the uh, cups that have the communion wine and bread. And then if you'll take those back to your seat and receive at your seat, and then at the door as you leave, uh, there's a little uh, container there to put the little cups in so we can clean those and all that. So just so everyone kind of knows the routine. We continue on page nine of your bulletin, or page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing 
always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
And now we continue with the post-communion prayer that can be found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 11 of your bulletin. Please stand as you are able. And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, Brian.